Paul Herbert, you won the giveaway from last week. Congratulations, comic fam. Let's talk about the hottest comics in the multiverse. Welcome to another Hot 10, the comics defining this generation of collectors. Hit the like, slap, the subscribe. We're here every seven days to bring you the up-to-date record breakers in the comic book marketplace. And I'm at the table virtually with the kingpin gem from Gem Mint Collectibles. How you feeling, brother? That you are. I'm feeling great. Excited to jump into this list, especially since number 10 is kind of a bad idea. I couldn't have said it better myself, Gem. At the list at number 10, bad ideas the hero trade a briefcase no number this book came out at the end of november in such a unique way and the numbers have been spiking ever since then with some major movement in the last week yeah when this book first came out at the end of november it was selling for 400 dollars for a raw copy last week selling for 500 dollars, and now this week up 200 percent selling for 1500 hot damn comic fam this isn't the first time bad idea has created an independent comic book something low print that has blown past the trending list and landed its way on our hot 10 one of the biggest sales for an independent comic book this year and they've done it twice i'll remind you about hero trade number one this book made our hot 10 multiple times over this year because of the low availability and being the first comic book published by the company well a briefcase, the comic making its way onto our list today, was one that you had to send in your bad idea sticker, the final five sticker that you would have gotten if you pre-ordered the last books that were being published by Bad Idea. The company's ending. For how long? I don't know. But apparently they are. And if you took that sticker and sent it in, they will send you one of these very rare copies of a comic book. Direct to consumer sales here. This is something unlike I've ever seen in the comic book marketplace. Only 154 copies were printed and 50 were sent out over the last month. Now, what about the rest of the copies? Yet to be seen what they're doing with those, but this book is blowing up by the day. And Jem, they even went one step further. I suspect they're making a statement here by what they wrote by hand on the inside of each of these comic books. That's right, on page seven, they have a hand-drawn word balloon that says, do not CGC me. I guess it's gonna get an automatic green label. I think that's a challenge. Y'all gotta send them into CGC to see if you get that blue label. Now, this story on the inside of this book was actually originally printed in ENIAC number one, one of the first titles debuted by Bad Idea earlier this year. They saved it for this comic book. What an interesting marketing decision. And we also get a Hero Trade number one preview image, a marketing ad that is an homage to the TMNT ad in Gobbledygook issue number one. Comic fam, if you like what we do, Hit the link in the description and join the January mystery mail call, the first mail call of 2021. One per box, everybody's getting a variant done by the impeccably talented Johnny Desjardins. Buffy, the last vampire slayer, issue number one. Virgins being sent out at random. Support the show. Get comics from me and Jem. Hit them with number nine. Number nine is the first appearance of a character that has seemingly been teased in multiple episodes of Marvel's What If?, we finally got some confirmation. Marvel premiere number 10 and slight spoilers for Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, the newest trailer if you haven't seen it. We have the first appearance of Shumagorath, the demonic entity, the Lord of Chaos, the overpowered villain that's literally taken over universes and dimensions in the comic books. I only know him from Marvel vs. Capcom too. I love that game. And I'll remind the community about the Lego set Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness release that shows this character on the cover. However, the name of which on the box was Gargantos, not Shuma Gorath. Well, at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home, we actually get the reveal of the trailer for the new Doctor Strange movie. And which tentacle one-eyed creature is it? It looks like Shuma Gorath. However, Gargantos is still on spec radar. What do you think, Jem? Yeah, immediately I thought, Shuma Gorath, but I didn't realize that whole Lego box thing, so I guess we're going to have to see how it plays out. Is it a red herring? Well, the numbers for this book show that members are indeed speculating on it. We saw a 3.5 sell for the first time ever, as far as recorded sales go, for $248. I suspect that would be a $100 book at best had the 
the SPAC not be real. The 5.5 sold for 250 in November. That's up 20% this week, now selling for 300 post the movie trailer. Then we have the CGC 8.5. It sold for $750 in November, and it's up 7%, now selling for 800 And what's this gem? A DC comic book making the list at the list at number eight, Batman 180, an iconic cover by Carmine Infantino of the Penguin. Usually when we see DC books on the list, it's Batman 181, the first appearance of Poison Ivy. But yeah, one issue prior, we got a CGC 5.5, which sold for $95 in August, up 46%, now selling for $139. With Colin Farrell looking unrecognizable as the Penguin, we know he is coming to the Matt Reeves Batman film. However, last week, the news was broken. HBO Max is bringing the Penguin to the screen in his own spinoff show. We're getting a Gotham PD show as well. The world building is happening, and the 6.5 sold back in July for $200, and that's up. Selling consistently and on the rise. 5% increase, selling for $209. And then we got to talk about the 9.6. First of all, we had a monster sale way back in 2009 when it sold for $3,000. In April, it sold for $1,680, and today, it's not a record breaker, but it is up 7% selling for $1,800, which is the highest sale since 2010 when the book sold for $1,931. So we're heading back in the right direction, trying to match that 3K sale. You got to keep an eye on these DC keys and iconic covers because the market is so focused on Marvel titles, just like number seven on the list, Amazing Spider-Man issue number 51, the second appearance of the Kingpin, what did you think about Hawkeye, Jam? Uh, this has now become one of my favorite Disney Plus shows. Yeah, man. They keep giving us what we want to see, whether it's Spider-Man No Way Home or whether it's Hawkeye giving us the kingpin. I'm super hyped for the season finale, which hasn't aired at the time of this recording. There are 20 different grade points that we follow looking for record breakers as it pertains to comic sales. In December alone, 10 records have been set across 10 different grade points. Half. In a short few weeks, we have a 4.0 selling for $200 in November. That's up 75% this week, now selling for $350 since the Hawkeye reveal. A 5.5 in October sold for $345. That's up 46% this week, selling for an all-new high of $502. And the 6.0 can't keep up. It sold for $386 back in September. It's up 18%, but selling for $455, so shy of the 5.5 sale. And when I say the 20 grade points that we monitor, we're talking about of the book and the grades that exist. There are no 10-0s, 9-9s, 1.5s, or 1.0s that we know to exist right now on the census. Nice catch, Tom. We don't want people to think that you think there's only 20 grade points when there's actually more. Number six on the list, it's Marvel Team Up Issue 95, more Hawkeye spec, the first appearance of Mockingbird. Spec that has been blowing up since episode four of Hawkeye, clearly Laura Barton, there's something more to this character. She knows too much. She is too good with technology to just be someone that is the partner to Clint Barton. Could she have ties to a superhero? Could she actually be Bobby Morse? Mockingbird and Hawkeye are indeed married at some points in Marvel continuity in the comic books. Yeah, those calls to home seem less like checking in with your wife and more like the briefing with your partner. Clearly, the ties to the Rolex may reveal more about this character that there is little known about. Well, we have an 8.0 going for $73 in September, and we didn't have just a 10% uptick selling for $80 once this past week. No, we had three different sales. Then we have the CGC 9.0. It sold for $109 back in May. It's up 19%, now selling for $130. And then we have the 9.4. Just two weeks ago, selling for $179. It's already up 20%, now selling for $215. Next on the list, midway through, number five, we have Fantastic Four, issue 33, the first appearance of Atuma. The Atlantean Barbarian. We have a rumor dating back to June that this character would be featured in Black Panther 2, especially because the Submariner spec is real and there's not a whole lot of characters to spec alongside of that very pricey superhero as it pertains to their keys that they're featured in. A CGC 6.5 sold for $675 back in August and there was two record-breaking sales, one for $750 and another for $795. The 7.0 went for $680 back in November. That's up 66% this week, selling for $1,130. And the 7.5 five sold for three hundred dollars in march that's up three hundred percent now selling for one thousand dollars yeah nick you're good these are all my sales oh my goodness jim mint, boy, jim mint putting his money where his mouth is comic fam this one's a first we have 
three records that were broken, and we actually have the buyer on the line. Man, I don't know how he tracks these sales down, but he's on point. I bought these four books because me and Tom have been doing this for over a year. And how many times do I tell you, Tom, if we would have just bought these books that we've talked about the first time we've talked about them, we could retire right now. We wouldn't even have to do these videos anymore. So you know what? If Fantastic Four annual number one is hitting number ones multiple weeks in a row, there's got to be Namor spec. I'm betting Atuma is going to show up in Black Panther 2, just like the June 2021 rumor states. Now let's clarify something here, Jem. The Key Collector Hot 10 is created before the filming of our video, and we have zero input about the books that make their way onto this list that we're talking about. Jem, Give us some insight, some reasoning behind your purchases outside of the spec being good. Yeah, that's why I'm saying Nick is good. When he watches this, he's going to be like, holy shit, I didn't even know those were gem sales. <laughs> now, I know it seems crazy, 300% increase selling for $300 in March for the 7.5. But I mean, look, the 7.0 sold for 680 in November and also an 8.0 sold for 1,000 in November. So I figured 1,000 for the 7.5, it'll have time to catch up to those 8.0 sales, especially if Atuma shows up. I think it's important that those who are speaking about the comic market are actually part of the comic market. These are expensive sales. Being able to justify them in real time with the buyers are something that I always am excited to bring to the mic. And with Submariner spec, we've also seen not just FF Annual 1, but we've seen his first solo title hit the list. We've even seen his first appearance be on Spec Radar, shattering records by the week. I also picked up a couple FF4, so they might end up on next week's list. Moving on to number four we have a big banger a marvel blue chip key amazing fantasy 15. could it be because of spider-man no way home Jem? what did you think about the movie this was one of the most fun experiences i've had in theaters watching a superhero film yeah no spoilers but uh they're giving us what we want isn't that so crazy it feels weird that fans are getting what they want and i think they've put spider-man in the best possible place that he could be in at the end of this movie. So that's all I'm going to say. Not just providing a layer of confidence in the entire comic book market for this character. I'll remind you about the September all-time record high, not just for this book, but in comic book history of a 9.6 selling for $3.6 million. We've been seeing the trickle effect happening across all grade points. Well, this week is more of the same. We have a 3.5 going for $44,000 in June, up 1%, selling for 45 k this past week. Tom, imagine if we both bought AF-15s around the first time we spoke about it before that record-breaking sale. The 5.5 sold for 78 k in 2020. It's up 5%, which is a lot of money when you're talking about sales this big, now selling for $82,088. And we have, if you like keeping up with the comic book marketplace, it moves very quickly. Download the best comic app in existence to keep track of it all. Key Collector Comics. Utilize code TOM101 to support the show. Get a free two-week subscription and get access to all this market data, categories, key comics, market news, spikes, and cataloging your own collection and get some suggested pricing at the list at number three. Daredevil 131, Bullseye will not come off of any of our lists, Jim. Yeah, that's right. Ever since Hitmonkey wasn't allowed to use Bullseye for their show, we assume it's because the MCU has plans for him. And it also doesn't hurt, spoilers, but at this point, we are over a week out from the movie, that Daredevil is indeed Charlie Cox from Netflix, as Kevin Feige confirmed. In the MCU. And if it feels like we just got done talking about this book, it's because it did hit number seven on last week's Hot 10. A CGC 5.5 sold for $295 in December. It's up 10%, now selling for $325. The 7.0 had two record breakers this week. Prior record was set in September for $350. It had not just one sale for $375, but another for an increase of 10% in value, selling for $384. A 9.0 had a new record breaker, up 3%, selling for 565. But the 9.6, which sold for two grand last week, is up 15%, now selling for 2300. We already chatted about it on this very video, but at the list at number two, you knew the Kingpin had to lead it. We have Amazing Spider-Man issue number 50, which by the way, aside from it being his first full appearance, is just a classic book. Spider-Man, no more. ASM, key history moments. In this book, Peter Parker leaving the costume behind, walking away from being Spidey. 
which was a scene that was recreated in Spider-Man 2 way back in the day when we first saw Dr. Octopus. Yeah, if ASM 51 hit the list, you knew this was coming. A 1.5 sold for $210 back in January. It's up 184%, now selling for $597. The 6.5 going for $2266 in August is up 10%, hitting the $2,500 marker this week. And lastly, we got the 7.0, which sold for $3,200 back in September, up 9%, now selling for $3,500. 500. If you like what we do, we're here every single seven days for the comic familia. Hit the like, slap the subscribe. It'll enter you to win a Venom lethal protector. It's actually Venom first host, Matt Damasi's shattered variant. However, it's a lethal protector homage done in the mosaic style. Let me know what you think about this list. And Jem, do the honors. Hit him with the number one hottest book in the cosmos. Another blue chip Marvel key, Incredible Hulk. Issue number one, the first appearance of General Thunderbolt Ross, Rick Jones, Betty Ross, and of course, Dr. Bruce Banner. Comic fam, this is a historical moment, not just for this major blue chip Hulk key, but blue chip keys in general. In 2021, we saw major upticks in value for this collectible, but only a lonely 5% that were publicly traded. People are reluctant to list these comics, regardless of the market that they are bringing. We're gonna start this off with the lowest grade possible, a .5, which sold for $4,400 back in 2019, up 70%, now selling for 7,500. That's when you know you just want the book. The 1.0 sold for $8,170 just last month. That's up 4%, now selling for 8,500. The 2.5 sold for 15,600 back in November, and it's up 3%, now selling for 16 grand. There are no nine eights of this book in existence currently on the census. There's not even a 9.6. The highest is a 9.4. And we haven't even seen that traded publicly. There's no data to report on for a 9.6. However, we saw the third highest graded sale of a Hulk one this very week historically of all time. And it was an 8.5. Before we give that record-breaking sale, just some perspective, a 9.0 in 2017 sold for 300K. A 9.2 in 2018 sold for 336K. And now we have an 8.5 that hit the market this past week, selling for $132,000 back in 2016, up 82% this week, now selling for the first time ever, making comic book history of $240,000. Comic fam, hit that like, slap the subscribe, and as always, Geek responsibly, stay minty fresh, and put your money where your mouth is. Enough said. Yo, Jam, every single week, where can they find us? Man, we're over on What Not for What Not Wednesdays. I set it off at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. I bring in key issues, runs, miniseries, omnibus, statues, and more, followed by Danielle, Nerdy Girl, and the rest of the crew. That's right. Join us on the best new app to buy and sell collectibles, funny books, expensive paper, affordable paper. Pokemon cards if you want to, but we're there for the comics. We also have two other videos for you to check out. Links in the description to follow both channels and have a great week, comic fam.